China's space computing power, breaking through the U.S. blockade. Why are on-orbit GPUs more vulnerable to having their throats choked? Introducing the suspense, the U.S. has actually sent a PC graphics card into space. And this graphics card, called the H100, isn't just for a space tour. It's being used to build a super brain in orbit, calculating Earth's every move with perfect clarity. Even more paradigm shifting is Elon Musk's declaration. In four years, space AI computing power will be cheaper than on Earth. Is this a technological fantasy or a bid for space monopoly? In simple terms, this is like moving your high end gaming laptop to the mountaintop. Previously, satellites would take photos, but the data had to be packaged and sent back to the ground for analysis. Like taking a video on your phone, saving it, and then uploading it to your home computer. Slow and data intensive. Now, with the H100 GPU in orbit, the satellite has its own super editor. It gets the result immediately after shooting, such as where a fire has broken out or where crops are short of water, and transmits the information to the command center in an instant. The truly frightening developments are yet to come. The Star Cloud 1 satellite boasts 100 times the computing power of its predecessor and can directly run open source large models, meaning it can not only see, but also think. For instance, if it detects an abnormal shipping route, it can automatically determine if it's a pirate ship without waiting for ground commands. NASA is even more aggressive, having already sent a photonic chip to the space station. This chip is resistant to radiation and computes 10 times faster than electronic chips, making it tailor-made for space AI. This space computing power battle is no longer a question of should we participate, but a life or death struggle of can we keep up? Next, let's unpack America's ambition, Europe's lesson, and more importantly, how China should respond. In the November space arena, the US is a dominant player. On the second, NVIDIA sent the H100 GPU into orbit, and on the third, the startup StarCloud followed up by launching the StarCloud 1 satellite, using the same GPU to lay the first brick for space AI. Even more shocking is that this satellite, in a low Earth orbit of only 350 kilometers, can process observation data from a radar satellite constellation in real time. A job that used to take ground data centers several hours to complete is done in minutes. Musk has even boasted that Starship will send 300 gigawatts of solar-powered AI satellites into space annually, a scale equivalent to 60% of the U.S.'s national electricity output. This move by the U.S. is far from simple, technological exploration. It's about seizing the space computing power. Toll booth. In the future, 5G, autonomous driving, and weather prediction will all rely on satellite data. Whoever masters real-time space computing first will hold the lifeblood of the data age. Just as the U.S. monopolized global positioning with GPS, it now aims to replicate that hegemony with space AI computing. Even more insidious, while they are aggressively pushing forward, they are simultaneously choking others. Export restrictions on the H100 GPU to China are stricter than before. It's like they built the gas station in space but won't let you bring your own fuel. Their intention is obvious. Warning the European lesson. Too much regulation, too little action. Looking at Europe, they are the typical example of being up early but late to the market. The EU loudly announced a 200 billion euro AI investment plan, launching the Digital Europe program and setting up AI super factory funds. It looks impressive. But what is the reality? A Stanford University report shows that Europe only added three major large models in 2024, far behind America's 40 and China's 15. The only European entry, France's Mistral AI, ranked last in testing. Why is this happening? It's because the regulation is too. One size fits all. The Artificial Intelligence Act has raised the bar too high, not only deterring foreign capital, but also tying the hands of domestic innovation. Europe's lesson is profound. Technological competition is not a children's game. Having only plans without execution, and focusing on regulation without inclusion, will only lead to falling further behind. The US is much smarter. On one side, they have companies leading the charge, NVIDIA, SpaceX, StarCloud forming an iron triangle, 
and on the other, NASA is backing up the technology development. The photonic chip experiment is paving the way for space AI. This enterprise-led, government-supported model has allowed the U.S. to surge ahead in space computing. If Europe doesn't wake up, they might not only rely on U.S. space computing in the future, but even their own Galileo satellite navigation system might need to borrow America's AI brain to operate. China hasn't been idle. The space computing power counterattack has already begun. On May 14th, the three-body computing constellation, spearheaded by Zhejiang Lab, successfully launched 12 satellites with a single rocket. This is not a simple satellite network. It is China's first constellation capable of thinking in space. A single satellite's computing power is up to 744 tops, and the 12 satellites combined offer 5 pops of computing power and can run an 8 billion parameter space-based model. While StarCloud-1 has just achieved on-orbit computing, our constellation is already capable of collaborative thinking. This move is both fast and stable. Where are China's advantages? First is systemic warfare. Zhujiang Lab handles core technology. Guixing Yuhang manufactures the satellite platform, and Helling Optoelectronics provides laser communication. The entire upstream and downstream supply chain is tightly bound. The U.S. relies on a few giants fighting alone. We rely on the coordinated efforts of national forces, an advantage that becomes particularly pronounced in large-scale networking. Second is demand orientation. Previously, less than one-tenth of satellite data transmitted back to Earth was utilized. Our constellation processes data directly in orbit, significantly increasing the effective data utilization rate, which is more practical than simply stacking computing power. Third is an open mindset. Unlike the U.S.'s technological blockade, our constellation invites global partners to participate. This is the appropriate perspective for a major power. However, we cannot let our guard down. America's ambition for space computing hegemony is on the table. Musk says he wants to build a base on the moon to manufacture satellites, aiming to achieve a Kardashev Type II civilization. Simply put, to monopolize the energy and computing power of the solar system. Although Jensen Huang and NVIDIA CEO poured cold water on this, calling it a dream, NVIDIA is quietly upgrading its space version GPUs, and the next step will surely be sending more advanced chips into space. Even more troublesome, the US is also aggressively seizing the right to set space rules. They may use space security as an excuse in the future to limit the development of our constellation. To counter this war, we must use a combination punch. First, we must focus on core technologies. Breakthroughs are essential in choke point. Areas like GPUs and photonic chips, we cannot continue to rely on imports. Zhujiang Lab has already made breakthroughs in onboard intelligent computers, raising computing power from the T-level to the P-level, and the next goal is the E-level. Second, we must accelerate networking. The three-body computing constellation must complete its deployment of a thousand satellite scale as soon as possible to form a computing advantage. Finally, we must unite allies. Many countries in Europe and Southeast Asia need space computing services. We can use our open constellation platform to attract allies and disrupt America's attempt at monopoly. Technological competition is not a zero-sum game, but we must have the strength to defend our ground. The struggle for space computing power is fundamentally a struggle for future technological discourse. The U.S. wants to dominate through technological blockade and a hegemonic mindset, but we are determined to break the deadlock through indigenous innovation and open cooperation. From the three-body computing constellation to the space-based large model, China has already proven with strength that we can not only keep pace but also lead the trend. In the struggle for space computing power, which link do you think China should prioritize for a breakthrough? Feel free to share your views in the comments section. Follow me, and let's witness every highlight of China's space technology together. Thank you for reading, and see you next time.